Hey everyone, Charmaine here and today I'm going to show you how I will start this recipe journal. To begin, I'm going to first start with the table of contents and I'm just going to mark this first two pages with a couple of numbers. So I just put in 2021 and then with the number 1, 2, 3 and so on. As you can see, I'm not really particular about the alignment of these tabs. I just like the asymmetry and randomness of creating these numbers. The last time I made a recipe journal was way back in 2016. But before I chatter on further, may I invite you to click subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up if you like what you see. Now it's time to drop down my first entry. So on this day that I started the recipe journal, I decided to try the vegan bounty bars. That's what the recipe is called. So I marked it in as entry number one, just crushed out that extra zero. I'm very forgiving with mistakes when it comes to my journals. I think these extra lines that I strike through and all these other things add to the authenticity of keeping a journal. The reason for why I decided to start keeping this recipe journal is because in 2020, I did a lot of cooking and baking. I am not a chef or anything, but I can make a decent meal if and when I want to. I come from a family of cooks, actually. From my mother's side, that is their main business like catering and baking, my grandma, my mom, my aunties. So cooking and baking comes naturally to me. I tried out a lot of recipes for 2020 and I guess that was like the whole trend, like people baking, people cooking stuff at home because of the pandemic and the lockdown. And it's a hit and miss for me. Sometimes I do things right and sometimes they're not as good as I thought they would be but then when I make really good stuff I tend to forget how I made them exactly so I wanted to keep notes this time because when I do stuff I try to check out different recipes and different styles of making or baking that good or that food and I switch it up depending on the ingredients that I have available and what other stuff that I have at home and all those other things. So I adjust the measurements as well depending on what I feel works best. So in a lot of ways you can say I am a rebel and I decided to just keep a little journal just so I remember the things that I did. So that I can either do the right thing over again or avoid making the same mistakes. So for this video, I'm doing a vegan bounty bar. But at the end, I think it didn't turn out vegan. Because I added dairy milk into the chocolate mix. So the two recipes that I looked up were from thepetitecook.com and the other one is from thebigmansworld.com so as you know i am an architect and i like drawing drawing is something that's second nature to me and i can just doodle away though i don't show it so much in any of my entries but i always make little figures and doodles whenever i make recipe journals and stuff I don't know I just think it makes it more visually attractive and I think to me it helps my understanding of it and you know when I draw things it kind of helps build that memory like the visual structure builds a sort of foundation memory on my head so I just remember things more that way I guess I really am a visual person, so since I'm keeping this journal for myself, I'm doing it exactly how I think I would best 
process or retain the information. So I just jot down all the ingredients and the process that is suggested by both recipes and I just work with the stuff that I have on hand and the equipment that I have on hand and see which works best. In this case, one recipe uses coconut milk and the other uses coconut oil. I have both, but the coconut milk is in powder form, so I just reached for the coconut oil instead. Anyway, the process seemed pretty straightforward, so after familiarizing myself with the process, I get right to it. So I don't have maple syrup, I thought corn syrup would do. And as I've said, I'm using coconut oil. Then I just prepare the blender and then I add in about a cup and a half of coconut flakes. Then I believe I added in one fourth cup of the coconut oil and I followed through with about one third cup of the corn syrup. So it was so difficult to blend it. I think it would work better if you had a processor. And it would have been easier if instead of coconut flakes, I had the shredded version or the desiccated version of the coconut. I didn't totally blend it, but whatever. This is how it looked like. And then I just mixed up the whole thing. It was actually well mixed up already. And I just put it in this chocolate mold. So I would have wanted it all the more shredded, but you know what? This turned out well anyway. And my phone died while I was doing this. And when it was done, I just popped it in the freezer for about an hour. After that, I prepared the chocolate, made a mess because I left the tripod upstairs and couldn't be bothered to go back up and get it. So I'm doing the rest of this video one-handed. So I just popped this chocolate chips into the microwave and let it run until the whole thing melted and while that is spinning i take out the frozen coconut mixture from the fridge and this is what they looked like to be honest these could have been more frozen but i was already hungry so i just popped them out of the molds as you can see now that I have my melted chocolate, I just dropped the coconut in it and tried to coat it with the chocolate. Using a fork to prop it up, I just placed it on the parchment paper that I prepared. And I just repeated this process for all of the frozen coconut. Just to note, I did add like about 3 tablespoons of milk into the chocolate that I microwaved because it was thick and it was not runny enough to coat the frozen coconut balls. After coating everything, I popped these little nuggets into the fridge and just about an hour. It could have been frozen a whole lot more, but I really wanted to eat them already and this is how they look like so as you can see they could have been frozen a whole lot more but here's a cross-section bite they taste a whole lot like bounty bars but because the coconut flakes were bigger and the chocolate wasn't exactly the same it had a different texture to it but Arvin agrees that it still tasted good so what I do after the cooking, I take time to jot down the things that I want to take note of. If this recipe is actually worth repeating, what are the mistakes that I encountered, what better ingredients that I should try or use the next time. Basically just notes to myself so that the next time I want to do it or I go shopping for ingredients, I can grab this particular one or try this one at the next time so it, this journal is more for myself so that I don't end up just scouring the internet 
again for what recipe that was i tend to do that a lot so that's how i keep my recipe journal so hopefully the next time around that i want to make bounty bars it could really be vegan or i want to try adding in a few more components into the coconut maybe berries or nuts so it's not going to be a bounty bar anymore but that is something that i will look forward to trying in the future anyway guys thank you for watching through till the end and i hope you enjoyed this video as i am trying to finish this first journal entry on my recipe journal on screen let me take this time to thank you guys for being here and for watching whatever i put up on my channel i'm truly grateful this is one of the last few videos that i'll be uploading for 2020 and i'm looking forward to sharing more of my videos and stuff that i'm doing for 2021 i still have one more video that i'll be uploading this week i'm sorry there's a bit of a delay in that the stationary advent calendar swap because i am merging the videos of the other ladies who did the swap with me just to make it more fun so it's taking a bit of a while for editing if you don't want to miss that just click subscribe and turn on notifications I hope you enjoy the rest of the week and the rest of what's left of 2020. Take care.